My friends, welcome back to the MB Medic Podcast. So today, I'm going to teach you guys ways to be more attractive to women. This is going to be absolute value. Let's get right into it. Alright guys, so I'm going to teach you guys how to be more attractive to women. You guys will stop simping if women are in your life in abundance. You hear me? You will stop simping if women are in your life in abundance. So I'm going to teach you how to attract them. I'm going to teach you the ways to draw them in like a magnet. Alright, it's some simple tips. Everyone can apply them to their life. Hopefully I can add some value to you. Let's do it. So the first way you can be more attractive to women, women is to get in shape. I know I always talk about fitness, but it is very, very important. You got to be above average. We've beat that into your head all over this podcast that you have to be above average. And being in shape is one of the easiest ways to be above average. Definitely deserves an air horn. So, as we talked about before, before 75% of men in the United States are either overweight or obese. So it is so easy to stand out if you can just be in shape. You're automatically above the 75th percentile if you can just get yourself in shape. You can get a frame, get some muscles on you, get a ripped six-pack, get some arms. The ladies are going to dig you. You got to be above average. So attraction to fitness is hardwired and instinctive in women. A woman has a natural need for protection and provision. It's in her DNA. You got to think about it. Like back when we were living in caves, living in nomadic tribes, women wanted to choose the men who are most capable of defending them against saber-toothed tigers and against, you know, some barbarian raider that wanted to come kill you, take her as a concubine, and take your children as slaves. So she wanted to get the strongest man possible to make sure that her kids would be healthy and to make sure that she could be safe. A man that was able to fight off these lions, fight off these barbarians. And so women are naturally attracted to a man who is in good physical shape. Though the need in today's society for a man that can, you know, fight off bears and stuff is, is not as strong as it was in the Paleolithic era. The DNA, the instinct to want to be protected is still inside of women. So you have, you have to be strong. You have to be in shape. And it's so easy to stand out above your peers by simply just getting in shape. So easy. So studies show that women actually prefer an athletic physique over a large penis. Yes, I'll say that again. Women prefer an athletic physique over a large penis. There was a study where basically they took a bunch of women, they put them in a room, and then they showed computer models of different men's physiques in front of them. And they asked them to rate them on a scale of attractiveness. 
And these uh, computer model figures had different body types. Some of them had broad shoulders, pecs, abs, and they also had, you know, a visualization of the, the figure's penis in the picture too. It really appeared that the men that the women were most attracted to did not just have big dicks. I mean, you, you could be like the MD medic and have both, have the rock and bod and have a trunk in the front like an elephant. But, you know, <laughs> the women were most attracted to men that had a strong aesthetic proportion of shoulders to hips. In other words, they liked men that had broad shoulders that were in shape, that weren't more round on the bottom than they were broad up top. So they did not like fatties. So if you're fat, you're losing, man. And I'm telling you this because I love you. I know I come off as harsh, but I want to help you guys resist the simp mind. And you can't do that until you can have multiple options and be in a position of abundance where you will stop simping over women. Because if you simp... That is a major L. Please do not sip. So, be in shape. Listen, you can have a small dick. I hope you don't, but you can have a small dick and still manage to attract women by simply being in shape. This study right here shows it. Like, we have facts, data, statistics, evidence right here that shows that, you know, body type, athletic physique, athletic build is just as important, if not more important, to a woman than your penis size. So, Man, this is something that anybody can do. Like, I don't understand why people would not want to take advantage of this game changer. Just simply being able to be in shape. It's so easy. Anybody can do it. Just a little bit of hard work, a little bit of dedication, a little bit of consistency. You know, and quite frankly, being in shape says a whole lot about you, right? If someone is fat and out of shape, you can pretty much tell that they've either given up on life, they're not a highly motivated individual, or they just don't have a whole lot of work ethic and make a lot of excuses. Because people who make excuses really nigga don't end up going to the gym, right? They don't end up putting forth the work that's needed to get the results. They rather just sit and complain about how much their life sucks, about how angry they are. You're a loser. Yes. They rather just sit and complain about the results of their inactivity. And it's visible. It's a visible outward sign. Your increased body habitus and being overweight shows your work ethic. So simply by being in shape, by being strong, by being ripped, by having a body that's ripped, muscular, aesthetic, people automatically know that that comes with work. And that says a whole lot about you. And going along with that, when you walk into a room with the physique of a superhero, people respect you a whole lot more. People are a whole lot less to try you. And let's just say you do get a pretty girl. Let's just say you do get a baddie. You know, you get you a seven or above. Everyone else is going to be looking at her. She's going to catch the attention of everyone else. And we all know when a dude walks in with a pretty girl, other dudes start sizing him up. You don't want to be sized up and people think you're a punk because you're fat and that they can take your girl from you. But if you're strong... If you're in shape, you got that fire in your eye that comes with the confidence from putting forth the work in the gym to get results, people are going to respect you a whole lot more. I can say that me, and just when I go into places, when I'm at work, when I'm around other people, the, the presence that I carry, the respect that I get simply because of you know being in shape, it's, it's an absolute real thing. It's one of the things that people comment on all the time. You know, I, I told you guys I work um, at a small rural hospital in the emergency department. And one time we had a patient that was really combative, wanted to get up, wanted to act like they wanted to run off and fight people. I literally just walked up and I said, sit down. They looked at me and they instantly decided that fighting and struggling was a bad idea simply because they could see on me and see on my physique that I wasn't playing games, that I'm OK with putting up with some hardship to solve a problem because my body shows that. Once again, when you're in shape, your body will show that you're okay with putting up with hardship to solve a problem and people will respect that. So that brings us to the second thing that every man can do.
And that's change your wardrobe. So how you dress is very important. And it's not just dependent on name brand. Justin Waller, I quote this man a lot. He's one of the smoothest dudes out there. He's got the country boy swag like no other. So Justin Waller, right? He's one of the most successful men in getting ladies in the era. Like no one else besides maybe Tristan Tate does it like this man. So he said that clothes should wear a man and the man shouldn't wear the clothes. That is powerful. Let me say that again. Justin Waller said that clothes should wear a man, not the man wearing clothes. This means that the clothes that a person wears should accentuate a man's best features. So if you're in great shape, clothes that are oversized are taking away a lot of attraction points from you, right? The clothes should show, hey, I put forth this work. The clothes should be a demonstration of your body. The clothes should show your best features, right? Just like a, a chick can walk around with a push-up bra with her titties popping out to get men's attention, and effectively so, we can do the same thing. I'm telling you, you want to wear clothes that fit you just right. And there's a couple metrics that you can use to see what fits you just right, right? A good solid t-shirt should fit you so that a sleeve hugs your arms and doesn't just drape over them, right? You want them to see that curvature right here between your biceps and your deltoid muscle, right? You want them to see the horseshoe that's in your triceps. You want them to be able to see all of that through your clothes because the clothes are wearing you. The clothes are showing you off. The clothes are demonstrating you as a man. I'm telling you, if they just drape over you, they're hiding a lot and you're losing points, easy points that could be working in your favor. And I'm telling you, one of the best things that a man can have in his wardrobe is solid colored t-shirts, solid colored, good fitting t-shirts, especially black, man. Black is great. It's the best color, I think, for a good fitted t-shirt because it shows the contrast between your teeth and your eyes and allows those things to stand out. So if you got some nice eyes, man, no homo. If you got some nice eyes <laughs> and pretty teeth, the black shirt will allow those things to stand out. And I think that it just accentuates those, those contours, those curves a whole lot better. That shirt should be wearing you, you. And the same thing even applies to dress clothes. Like a well-fitting suit will go a long way. A well-fitting suit with like a thin material dress shirt that wears you and shows you off in your perfectly fitting contours. Dude, it's money to the ladies. With that, get you a nice sport coat, right? Not too tight, but like once again, hug your arms, hug your chest, just the right size and a good pair of pants. It shows your butt, shows the bulge, man. Nice belt with that. I'm telling you, that is going to be money for the ladies. You heard that song. It used to be on Duck Dynasty. Every girl loves a sharp-dressed man. This is what comes to women's mind when they're thinking of a sharp-dressed man. What I just described. The name's Bond. James Bond. That guy. Like, y'all, come on. Look at Tristan Tate. The dude is always clean. The dude doesn't miss when it comes to dressing. He's on point. His dress clothes fit perfectly. And the dude is literally probably the role model for womanization. I'm telling you, this is the guy. So I can actually give an example of this working, right? When I was literally a brokey, right? I was a broke 20-year-old in paramedic school years ago. I dressed up for an event one time. And I was literally driving an $800 busted, broke down minivan, like a 1999 Dodge Caravan. Like, you can't get any worse than that. That was a... Uh... Ha! Gay! <laughs> yeah, I was losing cool points on every metric. Like, I was broke, young, in school, driving a beat-up car. But I got invited to an event that had kind of a, a more formal dress, right? So I've always been a martial artist. I've always been in shape. I've always worked out religiously. Even when I was broke and didn't have a whole lot else to offer, I had a nice body. I always had a good physique. 
And I've always intentionally dressed in clothes that accentuate my best features. So I went inside of the event venue, and there was a young lady there. And she very boldly came up to me and approached. She came up to me, she approached me, and she said, you are so attractive. Your clothes, you just look sharp. Mind you, I was wearing exactly what I told you guys about. You know, nice, good-fitting dress shirt, thin material, shows off your curves, fitted pants, keeping it simple, but just looking classy. She said, you look so good. I was wondering if you were the one that was driving the Ferrari that's parked outside to the event. She thought that because I was dressed so clean that I was driving the Rari outside. <coughs> Even though I was just the brokey that was driving the minivan. You're a loser. Yeah, that's who I was. But it literally shows right there how just your presence, just your presentation to people and what you wear can literally affect a woman's psychology and start the woo on on her right there. Just get in her mind right there. So... Your clothes matter. The clothes should wear you and not you the clothes. This is also proof that the brand doesn't matter. I think I got those clothes from Walmart. I certainly could not afford like Louis Vuitton or Versace. Like these are probably just Walmart clothes, but they wore me well. So it's not about the brand. It's about how you wear it. Now, I will say something. There is a caveat to this rule. If you're fat, if you're out of shape, if you look like a busted roll of biscuits, you cannot take advantage of clothes that wear you. <laughs> no one wants to see the Pillsbury Doughboy in a tight shirt. I'm just saying, that's, that, that is not the look. That is not the look. No one wants to see all those rolls, all those bus, busted can of biscuit dough just pouring out of places on tight clothes that are being shown like no nah, you in that case you want to wear clothes that are baggy that cover up as much of you as possible and then like just refer back to rule number one get in shape like this isn't hate homie this is love and an honest way to make you better because i would rather me hurt your feelings i would rather me get you offended me make you feel some type of way about yourself and then motivate you to get up and change and be better than you to get your heart broken by a chick that doesn't care anything about you, that doesn't care that you're a great guy, that you have a lot to offer, that you're smart, that you have some real love and devotion to offer. I'd rather you get hurt by me telling you the truth than you men go out there and get hurt by this ruthless sexual marketplace. I'm telling you out of a place of love, man. So listen to me. Get in shape so then the clothes can wear you. <laughs> Now, there's something else that I must say on this topic. <sighs> okay, I'm just going to say it. What if I cared about offending people? <laughs> this is the MG Medic Podcast. We're probably going to get canceled anyway, so let's just go ahead and get it done. There's something else I must say, and this is for the black dudes out there, the brothers, the chocolate kings. Because this is an issue that I see extensively in our community. Guys, listen. Please, I'm telling you, please, start dressing like an adult. I'm giving it an air horn because a lot of people feel this way. But I am the only one, one of the few people that are actually willing to say it. Because we live in a cancel culture where people are always afraid of getting canceled. I'm going to say, black dudes, start dressing your age, start dressing like an adult. You're not in high school anymore. <laughs> Guys, please stop dressing like a wannabe in a rap video or like you're sitting on the sidelines of an NBA game, you know, but bench should never get to play. Like these huge jerseys of sports teams or your pants sagging or just like you wearing all this fake like glittery, shiny stuff to try to make it look like you got ice on you. Or like, you know, wearing your big gaudy Kooji shirts. Like, come on, dude. You're losing on that. On that. And here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say this. I, I hate when people want to complain about racism. I hate when people want to say, oh, the white man is so bad. The white man is terrible. The white man is oppressing us. Stereotypes are so bad. We're so oppressed. 
but yet you're not doing anything but perpetuating the stereotypes and fulfilling them. Like, you're literally making racist people feel like they are right in every assumption about you. Seriously. So how are you going to get mad at people for being racist when you're literally fulfilling all of their stereotypes? Really, nigga? Correct. So, please, dudes, dress your age. Please. It, I don't care if rich homie Kwan wore it. You're not rich homie Kwan. And quite frankly... I don't even consider rappers high value men because most of them squander their money anyway. And most of them really aren't super talented. They just drop a beat, make some stupid dance, make some mind numbing lyrics. Half of them can't even read. And then they just get publicity and they blow up. And now we feel like that anomalous example of someone who made it just by existing should be the, like the role model for the, for the average. It's not, it's not the case dudes. Come on guys. Like, do better. And no woman of any kind of quality is going to take you seriously if you dress like a hood rat. I'm telling you, the only women that will take you seriously are doing so because they feel like they are not valuable enough to actually attract a man of quality. And if you watch an episode before about learning how women think, those are women that didn't have daddies and they are recreational use only. You don't want to be with those girls. Chicks that dig your drip Right, chicks that say things like "I only want a hood nigga," chicks that will like turn a good guy down who's dressed correctly <laughs> and not having his pants sagging, saying that they like the sag, they like the all that mess, you know. She belongs to the streets. You don't want them in the first place. They're recreational use only. They are literally for fun, but not to be taken seriously. And even using them for fun is a headache. I'm gonna be honest. You got to deal with their drama. You got to deal with their problems, their baby daddy issues. They're probably couch surfing because they've created no stability for themselves and they can't even attract a guy that would bring stability to them. You just got a lot of drama to deal with. You don't want those. Dress like you want to get respected. A non-ghetto, non-Thatiana girl will not look your way if you're looking like a hood rat. Gentlemen, this means you should understand the proper use and function of a belt and wear one. Not only will no one take you seriously with your pants sagging, but you are also a walking target to be made into a victim. You're not dangerous if you're walking around sagging. I, I'm going to tell you, you're not dangerous. Remember that video that I made? you got to be dangerous. You're not dangerous if you're walking around sagging. Because if someone wants to kill you, someone wants to jack you up, and you have to fight for your life, you're too busy holding your pants up. Meanwhile, a dude like me is hitting you with a spinning wheel kick right in your jaw, and you're done. You're dead. Deceased. You're not doing anything. You can't even run, yo. You can't even run. You can't, you can't hit anybody with the wudong, with the Aikido, when you're worried about keeping your pants up. Like... You got to be mobile, you got to be agile, <laughs> or a dangerous guy like me will destroy you. And a woman will not respect the dude who gets absolutely dominated in a fight right in front of her by another man. You know, there's a reason why 3,000 years ago, a stronger group of men would go and jack up an inferior group of men, take their stuff, kill the men, you know, or take them as slaves, take their wives, make them into concubines, Make these wives of the men that they just killed into slaves, into other wives, into servants, into concubines for recreational use. And the men that they do keep alive, they might cut their balls off making eunuchs and put their job as protecting the harem, watching over the harem of their conquerors. And this harem is full of men or full of women that used to belong to the same dudes that are the bodyguards over them. Yeah, don't. Don't, just don't be that guy. Don't get jacked up in a fight, period. And especially just for looking stupid. So, another thing, get rid of the, get rid of the do-rags, man. Do-rags should not be worn in public. I'm telling you, do-rags are for home. Do-rags are for sleeping. Man, you, you, you can't ask to be respected wearing a do-rag. If you look like a stereotype, you're going to get treated like a stereotype. And I don't understand how that is offensive to say, you know, everyone's like, don't shame, it's ethnic, it's cultural, positivity, don't judge. Like, come on, bro. Like, don't be that guy. Don't wear the gaudy stuff all the time. Like, 
I, I hate it when I see people walking around with like fake Gucci belts or fake Louis Vuitton, like fake name brand stuff, just to try to look like they're dripping. I mean, like, if you gotta buy it fake, then that means you can't afford it. And don't flex with something until you can afford it. Like, women can smell a fake, and so can superior men who are actually balling and don't have to just pretend to look like they are. Like, it, it, and let's just say, let's just say, you're coming in, you're wearing this fake chain made out of, like, gumball machine nickel with, like, cubic zirconium or worse than that, just, like, little plastic diamonds in it. Wearing a fake watch, fake Louis, fake Gucci shirt, <laughs> wearing some J's that you bought from, you know, the, 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 the flea market from Mr. Han who imported those fake <laughs> Jordans over here. You go to the club, you're all fake dripped out. And then let's just say you get a chick that she she's digging your drip. She's digging your swag, right? She thinks she thinks you're cool. She she wants to engage in coitus with you. And to engage in coitus, she says, I would like to go back to your domicile, to your place of residence, sir. And then you reply with, really? Uh, I don't know. Can we go back to your house? Because I don't have a car and I'm homeless. Really, nigga? Yeah, bro. Don't try to flex outside of your socioeconomic class. That's a problem in, 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 a, in the black culture. And I can say it because I'm in the culture. But, you know, I listen, I, I'm going to get canceled for this. I 100% I know someone's going to be offended by this. But this movement of everybody saying, oh, pro-black, do it for their culture, do it for your people. You know what? I don't identify with people just because they look like me. I identify with people that have the same morals, the same values, and the same mindset as me. So they can look like anything, black, white, Hispanic, Asian. I do not limit myself with people that look like me. And quite frankly, I'm really disappointed in our community, and I wish that we could do better. But – I think that's enough. Dress better. Stay in shape. Number three, easy thing that you can do. One of the easiest things you guys can do to be more attractive to women to women, is have good dental hygiene. Listen, your teeth matter. Women actually care about it. Care about it. There was an episode of Fresh and Fit where they interviewed Zuby. Shout out to Zuby. He's dope. Love Zuby. Zuby was on the After Hours show. And they went around the table asking women things that they find attractive. And if you guys have ever watched Fresh and Fit After Hours, it is wild. But it shows a whole lot about A, how modern women think, and B, how much dudes scent nowadays. But these women are, are pretty honest often because a lot of these chicks aren't really smart enough to even make up a lie. But on the show, they asked women – what they found attractive, and a lot of them said that they found dental hygiene attractive. I'm telling you, here, I'll, I'll, I'll show the clip. Whatever. Okay, <laughs> most uh, physical feature in a man that attracts you the most. Height, <laughs> smile, body, sure. uh, I don't know. Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> that shit is easy. Okay. Okay. No, Go it's ahead. like multiple. Um, Shoot. Smile, I think. Okay. Yeah. Cool. What about you? Eyes. Yeah. Okay. Smile. Okay. Eyes. Can they be uh... – All right, guys. So you wouldn't think that having clean white teeth in a first-world country would even be considered a flex, but it actually is, unfortunately. Like walk around in your daily life and look at the teeth of everybody that you pass by, like at the store, on the street, at school, at work, and you'll see that most people's teeth are going to be a shade of yellow and not white. It's, it's the craziest thing to think that in a first-world country people don't even have white teeth, but you know – it, it's wild, but that, that gives you just one more place where you could be better, where you could stand out. In a world where women have unlimited options of men due to social media, you want to be as competitive as possible. You have to stand out in every single way because women have so many options, and social media actually just shows the best of options in front of them. The dudes that look like you know Captain America with shiny white teeth. Huge muscles and a Lambo. Those are the people that you're competing with. Even if these chicks never actually meet these guys, in their mind, they think that that's how guys are supposed to be. So having nice teeth is one of the easiest ways that you could, like, fix that. And, you know, if your teeth aren't so far gone, like aren't jacked up and rotting out of your face, 
like you can really get that relatively easy. Like having nice teeth does not exactly require a dentist if your teeth are reasonably healthy. It's literally as easy as brushing your teeth twice a day, not smoking, like protecting your teeth when you drink things like coffee, wine, soda, like just use a straw, and then using a, a twenty dollar box of whitening strips like once a month. It is you know, it is that easy. And I'll tell you personally, out of all the things that I get complimented on a day-to-day basis, and I I get complimented a lot, like, your boy ain't struggling, okay? One of the things that I get complimented about a lot, and I can teach you guys this stuff because I've applied it to my life and I've seen results, my teeth, my, my smile, people compliment my smile all the time. And it's just another thing to stand out. So... You know, as hard as it is for men to get female attention in the first place, like just one more little thing that will make a chick like stop and and even consider you or even look, take a second look at you. Like in such a distracted world, little things like even dental hygiene are important because I don't want you guys to miss out on being able to find love and happiness because a girl doesn't even notice you because a girl doesn't even get the chance to see that, you know, you're a really good guy. You're nice. You've got a lot to offer. You're a strong leader. You're a good provider. You're a protector. You're you'd be willing to die for her. You'd make a great father. But like, if she doesn't even notice you, you won't even get the chance to show her. So little things like your teeth can help you stand out. Guys, I'm, I'm giving you some sauce. Once again, I may be harsh, but I really do care about you guys. Number four, another thing that you can use to stand out, to, to be more attractive to women, to turn their heads, to get them to notice you, is your fragrance. Listen, fragrance game is an absolute win. It can be a huge win for a lot of people. The fragrance game is a game changer. So, most men are very non-intentional about how they smell. Like, I'm not entirely convinced that most men even shower daily. And even if you do shower daily, like... Just showering daily and keeping your breath fresh is that's just the start. Like, there's much more intentionality that needs to go into it. Every man should specifically know his body enough to find a deodorant that specifically works and is strong enough to suppress his body odors. Like, there's a lot of men that just like the plain dove deodorant will work for, but then there's others that it will not and they need something stronger. You should be very intentional to know and like ask people, Are you doing a good job? Find something that's gonna be honest with you and ask them are you doing a good job and smelling good like be completely intentional know your body get products for that and i know it might sound kind of sissy to talk about like fragrance products and hygiene but like dudes it's 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 easy points for you man i'm trying to help you guys out so like i get compliments all the time how good i smell and it's crazy because like i don't really do too too much i mean i bathe every day I brush my teeth a few times a day. I'm very conscious to make sure that I always have gum or mint on me so my breath doesn't stink. I put on um, cologne every day. But, like, the fact that simple things like that makes me stand out so much, I really wonder, like, what's what's the average? What's the contrast for me to be able to stand out so, so much? So, yeah, you guys need to smell better. better. And I'm going to let you in on one of my secrets. One of the things that I use and apply all the time Scented lotions that are made for men are an absolute game changer. You can apply this on your whole body before you leave out and start your day. You know, apply it after you get out of the shower. It soaks into your skin. It smells fantastic. Like, get you some good, like, spicy smelling ones that soak into your skin. They linger around for a long time. It's a good base layer. And then when you put a quality cologne on top of it, dude, it's money. So, a couple suggestions, man. Bath and Body Works. Make some great ones. Great ones, I'm telling you. Like, these are 15 bucks, and they're always running sales on them. Guys, I'm giving you some sauce. This stuff will go a long, long way for you, right? This will give you a dominating masculine fragrance. This is just layer one, you know. You you combine it with soap, with deodorant, with your cologne game, the whole picture. It's, it's It's beautiful. It's art right in the nose. Right. So to complement that, though, you got your soap, you got your deodorant, you get your lotion on. But then to complement that, you get yourself a good cologne. And I'm not talking about like Axe. 
I'm not talking about like super, super low quality stuff that's very alcohol based. The kind of stuff that gives people a headache when you when they have even just a little bit of it on. If if cologne gives you a headache, or if somebody else's cologne like is smelling really nauseous, it's literally because it's low quality. Because a good cologne should not smell like that. It should. It takes a whole lot of good cologne to really be overpowering. Like it it should not be nauseous. So if if you if your cologne some people say it smells too strong, it gives them a headache, then that means that it's probably too low quality. And I'm telling you, like I'm I'm all about men being frugal. But a good cologne is something that you really, really need to invest in. And I'm telling you, selecting a cologne is meticulous. I'm all for spending money wisely, but but spend good money on this. So you want to find a cologne that is rooted in the fragrance of a spice and is oil-based. Spice. So, like, if you look at a cologne bottle, a high-quality cologne bottle, it'll tell you, like, it's got... Hints of, of cinnamon, of vanilla, of cardamom, things like that. So spices are natural. They go into your skin really good, and they're really hard to be overpowering. And an oil-based cologne, or cologne that have a lot of essential oils in it, they'll absorb into your skin, they'll last longer. They won't smell like really nauseous and heavy and make like people want, have a headache and stuff because they 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 absorb into your skin. They stay on rather than than just being volatile and dissolving into the air like alcohol. So alcohol is a very volatile solution. It very quickly evaporates into the air, so it doesn't last any for very long, and people are getting a very high concentration in their nose. It's not a good not a good move. So some suggestions of solid colognes. I mean solid ones that are consistent delivery mechanisms for me. Like consistent money makers, consistent game changers, consistent just <coughs> wins for me are Black Orchid for by Tom Ford. Like that one run you about 180 bucks for the standard size. It's a fantastic cologne though. You got the One Gentleman by Dolce & Gabbana about 120 bucks. You have Midnight by Perry Ellis probably about the $200 range. You have Eros Flame by Versace and you have RM by Ron Marone. Like those are probably going to be in about the the 100 to $150 range. But man, I'm telling you, they're really they're really worth it. You don't have to use a whole lot. The oil absorbs and absorbs into your skin, stays on you all day. Fantastic. But I must say, you see the colognes right here, some of the ones I'm talking about. Some of the ones that are an honorable mention for under a hundred dollars that actually smell like a the two and three hundred dollar colognes are gonna be this one, Cuban Cigar by Remy Lafray. This one is solid, solid. This one is a good, like, spicy kind of smell, a little bit of tobacco in there, a little bit of cinnamon. Man, this is a winner. You combine that with the lotion by Bath & Body Works that is uh, after dark, dude, you got a win. You got instant head turners. Another good one that's relatively affordable, running in the $50 to $70 range, Bath & Body Works Leather & Brandy. Solid oil-based fragrance. Smells fantastic. Stays on you for a long time. Dude, a win. And these are these are budget clones. As I said, these will be about these will be a hundred dollars and down. Easy man. Invest in a good smell. Invest in a good fragrance to be intentional. That's enough of that. Next thing you can do to be more attractive to women to women is have intelligence. If you have looks, if you have fragrance, if you have, you know, hygiene, pretty white teeth, and intellect, you are dominating the playing field. I'm telling you, game, everyone always wants to talk about game. Literally all game is being is doing is having intellect, having smartness in a situation, having intuition, having perspicacity to read the beat of the conversation, to be able to direct the conversation where you want it. And in order to direct the conversation where you want it, you got to know a little bit about everything, right? You can't have game without having intellect. And in an era that has been called the information age, there's absolutely no reason to be dumb. I'll say that again. In an era that is called the information age, there is no reason to be dumb. <laughs> the internet, YouTube, every audio platform, a podcast, is available and gives you information to learn about anything. You can learn about game, masculinity, making money, 
like what you learn about them here. You can learn about, you know, seahorses and walruses. I'm not like it's just information about everything, everywhere. You need to learn a little bit of everything. Once you get the girl by being in shape, looking good, smelling good, dude, it's so shameful to lose her by simply not knowing what to talk to her about on a date. Like if you know a little bit about everything, talking to her is so easy. And she's so attractive because women love them to death, but they're not very great at leading a conversation. They in general want you to lead. They want you to have, you know, the leadership role in everything, in in talking and protecting and providing. And that's okay. That's not a drag against women. That's what they're supposed to do. That's their nature. And as a man, you should be glad to be in a leadership position. But women are very attracted to you when you can lead the conversation. And you have to be smart to do that. If you know a little bit of everything, you can do it. Because whether women realize it or want to admit it or not, they're insanely attracted to men that are inherently superior to them in every way. For example... We've already talked about this. The average man wants a man that's taller than her, stronger than her, smarter than her, makes more money than her, and has leadership capabilities. She therefore wants a man that is her superior across every metric. And by always being the smarter, more well-spoken, more compendious, more intelligent person in a relationship, if you can seem like you know everything, you are that leader that she instinctively needs to be attracted to you, to respect you, and to fall in love with you. That is game. That is money right there. You will help to satisfy a woman's subconscious need for subordination by simply being smart and being able to lead a conversation and being able to direct the flow, the mood of the date, however you want it. And you also have a whole lot more options to, to really take the conversation where you want it. You'll be, if you're smart, you can be really subtle in, in hinting towards becoming more intimate to get the things that you want. Like being intelligent is a great thing. I never run out of things to talk about. And it is one of the huge things that has made me so successful in life, not just in interaction with females, but just in life in general, being able to talk to people. Because that's how you form relationships with all kinds of people. And you've heard it been said before. Net worth equals net work. You got to be able to talk to, to people. So as a man, you must be the leader across all metrics. And that's how women are going to find you attractive. So having a classy gentleman that has intellectual superiority, that has manners, that can talk to her about anything, that can just be a quintessential model of confidence and intelligence, dude, that's going to do so much for you. So you got to be smart. So as far as intelligence thing, you know, uh, in my experience, man, here, here's something that I get all the time. Women will tell me when they're talking to me for a while, you know, they might be twirling their hair. And that's how you can tell they're interested in terms of their eye and, and body language and the different things to do with your hands. After talking and I'm just wowing them with how much I know and able to talk about everything, even the things that I'm not very interested in that she's interested in. I end up still knowing more than what she knows. They'll say things like, man, what don't you know and what can't you do? This is a huge turn on for women because what she wants in a man is a man that is security, a man that she can run with, run to with all of her problems and have him have an answer to them. And that is what intellect does for you as a man. So enough on that. I think I've made that point. The last thing, and I think this is the most important one, so I saved it for last. The sixth thing you can do to become Insanely attractive to women. And I think this one is a combination of all of them. All of them is frame. Frame. This is the most important thing a man can do to make himself attractive to a woman. Every other tip that I've mentioned in this episode, all of them go into frame. They're all contributing factors to increase a man's frame. So you may ask, what is frame? Frame is the value-based leverage that a man has in his relationship. It is the leadership authority and tone-setting capability. Women want a man who is a leader and has frame. A man who with the frame in the relationship has the confidence and the value as a man to tell a woman no and to enforce the standards without fear of her retribution. Most girls have never even been told no before. 
because they're used to dealing with simps. Simps are men that give women undeserved favor and attention for nothing in return. So most girls are used to dealing with simps. These are guys who feel like they're with the girl that's out of their league, and so they'll do anything to make her happy, even when it means degrading themselves and their morals and putting up with things that they normally would not tolerate. But if you have frame, you can be a guy that can tell a girl, no, do not be a dick to women. I don't want anyone to think that I am saying to be a misogynist, to be rude to women, and I want that to be understood and known. Women deserve respect. They're beautiful creatures that are meant to be respected and loved and protected and cherished. They are different than men. Men and women are not the same, but women deserve respect. So do not be a dick to men. Having frame is not being a dick. Having frame is simply just having the confidence in yourself, the self-value to be able to stand on your morals and to create a moral framework and a value system in the relationship. For example... A man that has frame can tell his girl, no, you are not wearing that thotty outfit out the door. To go out with your thotty friends to the club where you're going to be advertising yourself as a thought for other men to want. You're not going to do that. A man with frame can tell his girl that without fear of her reaction. If she protests, this man can reply with gentleness but yet firmness and say, you're free to do whatever you want. But if you choose to not respect this, you will be single when you get back. I'm telling you, if you have enough value as a man, i.e., if you have made yourself far above average and therefore hard to find and even harder to replace, and also greatly desirable to other women, you will have the frame and that woman will respect you. She will submit to you because she knows That you will be hard to replace, you'll be hard to find, and a bunch of other women want you. And therefore, she'd be more likely to behave. Now, she still might go and do what she wants, but if you actually leave her, which she may not think that you actually do it because she's stealing the sense, if you actually leave her, she'll come back. I promise. You know, women will say, I don't want to be controlled or manipulated and I'll call men toxic that hold them accountable to their actions. However, they're instinctually attracted to men that have leadership capabilities and who act as if they have frame. Women are instinctively attracted to someone who is their superior. And I'm not saying superior is in oppression, as in misogyny, so guys, please, like, chill. But as in their superior, as in the leader in a situation, the leader in, in, in protection, the leader in providing – A sense of security, that is what a woman looks for, and they're instinctually attracted to that. And you having frame is a characteristic of that superior man that they're attracted to. Woman will say, I want a man that that just wants me and will only be faithful to me and all these kind of things. But like they really want a dude who is the highest value possible and can attract a bunch of women. There's actually a study study that says that women are more attracted to men who other women want and surround, right? This is like value validation for women. So mind you, we're going to go back to the Paleolithic era where, you know, women are out looking for the strongest man so they can survive and their kids can survive. They're going to go for the dude that can throw the spear the furthest, that can wrestle the bears, that can fight everybody else, the guy that's strong, the guy that's the leader, the guy that's the chief. And this guy will have like 40 wives, right? The chief will have a bunch of wives, a bunch of concubines, and the little peasants probably won't have any. But, you know, women will say, oh my gosh, I want a man all to myself. But since the beginning of time, they've all gathered around the men who have been the strongest. It's, it's just nature. And the reason why is value validation. Because it's easier. It's like a mental shortcut, right? If this woman here has validated this man to be with him, and so is this woman and this woman and this woman, and all these women are getting with this man, then I don't have to work so hard to validate his value because all of these women have themselves. Selves. So, like, that's value validation, and that all goes back to frame. Like, it's actually, like, psychologically ingrained in women to be attracted to frame. They will say they don't want a man that's controlling. They don't want a man that can have a bunch of women. But, like, literally, come on. Like, if you go to a club 
And he put a real nice guy who's average, five foot eight, makes thirty thousand dollars a year, but he will be completely faithful to a woman and will make her happy and give her whatever she wants and will never oppose anything that she wants. And you set him beside a dude that's a millionaire, a celebrity, has status, has power, lots of women are attracted to. The guy's attractive, the guy's driving a Ferrari, one hundred out of one hundred women. I said one hundred out of one hundred women are going to choose the baller. They don't just want an average guy. And so you being a man of frame is a thing that adds value to you. Even if you're broken, you're still up and coming. Like just carrying yourself a frame will at least even like give the idea that, hey, maybe you're a guy of higher value. Why are you so confident? There must be something about you that makes you confident. And that will be value validation. Because most women, as I said, have never been told no before, especially attractive ones, and are so used to being given whatever they want or never being corrected for poor behavior by sense who are so desperate for sex that they give up all of their standards and self-respect just to possibly get a whiff of pussy. Having frame in a relationship reflects the abundance mindset that women are subconsciously attracted to. In a woman's mind, they subconsciously will think, wow. This guy can tell me no, so he must have a lot more options than just me if he's not afraid of me walking out and throwing a fit by telling me no. That's real. That is 100% real. So, I can give you an example of this. I have a friend. He's in a relationship. He's, he's married, actually. Really good dude. Living an average life, you know, working a nine-to-five um, well, he's, he's an EMT, so he works a lot more than a nine to five, but working average hours, like he wanted to make more money, but his wife would always be like, no, you have to be home at this time because I want to go out and hang with my friends and you have to come and watch the baby it, or his wife would be like, I want to go here. You need to pick him up the, the child and take him to this recital and take him to this and take him to that. Meanwhile, his wife is like working in a factory and having all kinds of other men like hitting on her and stuff like absolute loser situation but this guy is one of my friends i took him under my wing i taught him the ways of the md medic and now he's getting his game up his frame up his money and his muscles he's becoming completely just a a baller in everything that he does he's working more he's standing up for himself he's standing up for his values and now he told me that the other day his wife came to him and said you know what you're going to school to become a paramedic now you're working a lot more making money. You're investing. You're getting in shape. You're looking good. You're smelling good. You're intentional. You've got a new fire in your eye. You carry yourself with a new level of dominance. It's super attractive. And I'm afraid that when you know you go and you continue going up, another girl is going to take you. Listen, that is what's getting her to behave. He said that her behavior has changed completely she's sucking his dick more she's respecting him more she's cooking for him more she's being nicer to him she's not arguing with him because he's got frame and i told him the biggest things he can do is not reassure her that he's not going anywhere because if she thinks that she has you to herself 100 percent, even if you're completely intent on being faithful to her that's wonderful still don't tell her that because she is going to act better when she understands there's competition that all goes back to frame frame so listen men i hope i added some value to your life i hope i showed you how to be more attractive to women i hope you guys actually go and apply these things to your life because i want to see you guys be the very best that you can be i want to see you have money muscles game and frame in the words of modern life dating i want to see you guys get better i want to see you guys get the women that you want the lives that you want the happiness that you want the money that you want md medic podcast out Follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, at the ND Medic Podcast. Love you guys.